Did David sin by eating the showbread? This is the question that we seek to answer today as we continue our verse by verse study of the book of 1 Samuel on walking through the Bible. Today we're going to be discussing 1 Samuel chapter 21 verses 1 to 9, but before we do that, let's read the passage. If you have a Bible with you, turn to 1 Samuel chapter 21 verse 1, but if you don't have a Bible, don't worry, just follow along with us on the screen. The version that we'll be reading from is the New King James Version. So 1 Samuel chapter 21, beginning at verse 1. Now David came to Nob, to Ahimelech the priest, and Ahimelech was afraid when he met David and said to him, Why are you alone, and no one is with you? So David said to Ahimelech the priest, The king has ordered me on some business, and said to me, Do not let anyone know anything about the business on which I send you, or what I have commanded you. And I have directed my young men to such and such a place. Now therefore, what have you, ha what have you on hand? Give me five loaves of bread in my hand, or whatever can be found. And the priest answered David and said, There is no common bread on hand, but there is holy bread, if the young men have at least kept themselves from women. And David answered the priest and said to him, Truly women have been kept from us about three days since I came out, and the vessels of the young men are holy, and the bread is in effect common, even though it was consecrated in the vessel this day. So the priest gave him holy bread, for there was no bread there but the showbread, which had been taken from before the Lord, in order, to be, in order to put hot bread in its place on the day when it was taken away. Now a certain man of the servants of Saul was there that day, detained before the Lord. And his name was Doeg, an Edomite, the chief of the herdsmen who belonged to Saul. And David said to Ahimelech, Is there not here on hand a spear or a sword? For I, have neither, for I have brought neither my sword nor my weapons with me, because the king's business required haste. So the priest said, The sword of Goliath the Philistine, whom you killed in the valley of Elah, there it is, wrapped in a cloth behind the ephod. If you will take it, take it. For there is no other except that one here. And David said, There is none like it. Give it to me. Chapter 21 begins with David on the run from King Saul. He would have begun near Gibeah, where Saul was, and here we have him coming to Nob. Now, we don't exactly know where Nob is, but from Isaiah 10, we have it listed among cities that are close to the city of Jerusalem, so it is quite possible that Nob is near the Mount of Olives, just outside Jerusalem. That makes sense also, for we find that Goliath's sword is here at Nob, and if you recall back to chapter 17, the head of Goliath was brought here, so it makes sense that Goliath's sword would be eventually brought here. Two. The location of Nob is not entirely important, though, but what is there is, namely the tabernacle. This is the first explicit mention of the tabernacle since the days of Eli at the beginning of the book. All the way along, we have been inferring that the tabernacle was moved from Shiloh after Shiloh was destroyed by the Philistines based on where the Ark of the Covenant was and based on where we find the tabernacle here in chapter 21. How long the tabernacle has been at Nob, we do not know, but it is here now when David is on the run. We will note, though, that the Ark of the Covenant does not appear to be here, for David will bring it back from kirjath Jerem in 2 Samuel 6, which is exactly where it was in 1 Samuel 6. Instead, what is here is everything else of the tabernacle, the tent, golden candlestick, table of showbread, and altars of the tabernacle. Sacrifices are being offered here by the priests of God. And the high priest we have identified here is Ahimelech. Back in the days of Eli, Phinehas, his son, probably would have become high priest after Eli had Phinehas not died in chapter 4. Instead of Phinehas, a high tub, Phinehas' son, became high priest. After a high tub, chapter 14 would have Ahijah as high priest early on in Saul's reign. However, time has passed and it appears that Ahijah has died. Chapter 22 will reveal to us that Ahimelech is also the son of Ahitab, meaning that Ahimelech is either Ahijah's brother or he is Ahijah's son, with the term son of being used for grandson or other descendant, as is sometimes the case in the Old Testament. Personally, I believe that Ahimelech is Ahijah's brother, but regardless, he is the high priest. 
When David comes to Ahimelech, he tells Ahimelech that he is on a secret mission from the king, and he is being accompanied on this mission by a group of men who he told to meet in such and such a city. This, of course, is a lie, as David is fleeing from the king. But the Bible is not telling us this in order to defend David's actions. It is simply recording what David said. All lying is sinful, and so David sinned here in telling this lie. The reason why David likely told this lie is because, had he said he was on the run from the king, Ahimelech might not, might not have acceded to his next request, which was to provide him some bread, five loaves worth, so he could feed his men. There was a problem, though. Ahimelech didn't have any common bread to give David. All he had left was the old showbread that had just been exchanged for the new showbread. Now, the showbread was the consecrated bread that would be placed in the holy place of the tabernacle on the table of showbread opposite the golden candlestick. It would remain there for one week, after which it would be changed on the Sabbath day for new bread. Leviticus 24 verses 5 to 9 makes it clear that the old showbread was to be eaten by the house of Aaron alone. It was still consecrated bread, even though it had been taken from the presence of the Lord. So what was Ahimelech to do? If he gave David the showbread, he would be giving David, a non-priest, the holy bread of the tabernacle. However, if he didn't give David the bread, they could starve, as there doesn't appear to be many settlements nearby where David and his men could obtain food. Doing this would break the command in Leviticus 19 verse 18 to love your neighbor as yourself, a command which would include providing your neighbor the necessities of life if they are in need of such. Both of these are commands of the Lord. So which one takes precedence in this case? The actions of Ahimelech and later the confirmation of good by Jesus in the Gospels showed that loving one's neighbor and giving David the showbread in this special case took precedence. Ahimelech's only condition was that the men of David couldn't be unclean under the law, a fact to which David did stipulate. The reason for this condition was likely connected to the instructions concerning the peace offering found in Leviticus 7 verse 20, for in that sacrifice, the holy sacrifice, was not to be eaten by those who were unclean under the law. And so in connection with this holy bread, Ahimelech made the same conditions. The question arises then, did David sin in eating the showbread? Well, no, and for two reasons. Reason number one is that in the Gospels, Jesus said as much when he was confronted by the Pharisees about his disciples plucking grain to eat on the Sabbath. Jesus used this very story to make the point that David did not sin by eating the showbread in that special circumstance, and neither did his disciples sin by plucking grain on the Sabbath in their special circumstance. Who then are we to argue with God? Jesus' response to the Pharisees and Ahimelech's actions in 1 Samuel 21 do teach us that God had laid down a principle with Israel that up to this point in the Old Testament we have not specifically read of, but which must have been taught, for God will complain that Israel wasn't following it in Hosea 6 verse 6. And that principle, of course, is that God desires mercy and not sacrifice. Now, just like it was when Samuel said obedience was better than sacrifice in 1 Samuel 15, God desiring mercy and not sacrifice doesn't mean sacrifices aren't important. It's just that sacrifice by an unmerciful person is not pleasing to God. With no other bread present but the showbread, what was the merciful thing to do? Give David the showbread so that he and his men didn't starve, even though that bread was normally meant only for the priests. God always values human life, life made in his image, as so valuable and precious to him. And so to, in essence, take that life by allowing someone to starve would be sin. This specific situation was an extenuating circumstance, a special and unique circumstance, and by no means did this give the priest the right to set up a restaurant to give away the showbread. If anything, it might have shown the priest the necessity of having some common bread with them so they didn't have to use the showbread in cases like these. So in this, David did not sin, and Jesus would make this point in places like Matthew 12, verses 1 to 8, in his many discussions about the law with the Pharisees. When we apply a passage like this to us today, we must always ensure that we follow God in all things. If we're ever in a situation where we have to show mercy over sacrifice, 
we must first determine if mercy can be shown any other way. We have to determine if what we're actually showing is mercy and not just fulfilling a carnal desire of someone. For God desires mercy and sacrifice. But if we are presented with a similar situation to that of here in 1 Samuel 21, may we be able to discern what God wants us to do in showing mercy by going to Scripture and following all of His Word. Coming back to 1 Samuel 21 now, David and Ahimelech and the other priests were not alone that day, for a servant of Saul, the chief herdsman, Doeg the Edomite, was also there, being detained by the Lord. What this means is that he was at the tabernacle probably offering some sacrifice or fulfilling some vow, making him a witness to these events. This will become important in chapter 22, so remember this man's name. David, just beginning his escape from Saul, didn't have time to get his weapons, and so along with the showbread, David asked Ahimelech for weapons, giving the excuse that the king's mission required him to leave in haste. The only weapon there was the sword of Goliath that David had obviously brought there some time after the battle with Goliath. It was this sword that was given to David, after which David left. This story here with David and the showbread is going to have dire consequences for the priests at Nob, something we'll see in chapter 22. But before we get there, we have to finish off this chapter, something we will do, the Lord willing, in the next lesson. With that, our time is up for today. The Lord willing, we hope you'll join us for tomorrow's discussion of First Samuel chapter 21, verses 10 to 15, as we continue our walk through the Bible, one verse at a time. I'm not a Thank you for watching today's episode. We hope that you found it edifying and ask that you not only subscribe to our channel and podcast, but that you like and share this episode among your friends so that the saving gospel of Jesus Christ can go out to the whole world. Of his cross.